Fawn Fritz is the granddaughter of rancher Mac Brazel. She never handled the material herself, but she remembers hearing about some of the strange sticks and metal remains. He had tried to burn the wood, and the wood wouldn't burn. He tried to cut the wood with pocket knife, and it wouldn't cut. And the piece of tin foil, Grandpa had wadded it up and put it in his pocket. Well, he took it out of his pocket and laid it on the table, and it it just opened back up flat out on the table all by itself. Frankie Rowe's father was the Roswell fire chief. She remembers handling the miracle material. She was waiting at the fire station for her father to give her a ride home when a state trooper came by and brought out something extraordinary. And over the table he dropped what was in his hand. It was all wadded up when it hit the table. It was totally smooth and totally flat and no wrinkles at all. And everybody around the table, all the crew, picked it up played with it. They all tried to cut it with knives. They tried to burn it with their cigarette lighters. And they couldn't burn it, they couldn't tear it, and they couldn't cut it. The military was quick to threaten anyone who handled the materials, according to the witnesses. As he said, uh, this is a big desert here. We can take you out and nobody will ever find your bodies. So he said, if you ever talk about this the rest of your life, we will find you. And there's people here in Roswell many years ago that came up missing. And uh, they've never been found. And that's because they spoke of what happened. Curly Green's father was stationed at Roswell in 1947. In his dying moments, he told her about more than memory material. I bent over and told his dad, I love you, and I'll see you soon. And he said, baby, don't ever let anyone tell you that that crash never happened. He said, I was there, I saw the spacecraft, and I saw the grace. And that's the last time I got shocked to my dad. Graves were the aliens, alleged casualties of the Roswell crash. Frankie Rowe remembers her father telling her about a lot more than just bodies. He came home to supper with a shocking story of a crash survivor. When they got there, they found that uh, a flying saucer had crashed and there were two bodies on the ground, but they had already been covered up and he said they were in what he called body bags and there was one that was walking around that was alive. And they stopped the fire truck, and of course they're talking among themselves, what can we do to help this little person? And the little person talked back to them and said, there's nothing you can do. Uh, there's, don't be afraid, we're not here to hurt you, we've been watching you for a long time. Lee 